Hello, this is Marshall Zhukov, and, well, you know how this saying goes by now. Knock yourself out. Go ahead and say it. You know you want to. We are going to be talking about military surplus rifles. So you want to be a military surplus rifle or, generally speaking, military surplus firearm collector, well, stay tuned because the information I will present to you, if you are a first-time collector, is going to be very important. The first question you got to ask, what are you looking for? There's so many different kinds and it's not just key 98s and grands as we can see here. There are so many different kinds and types of military surplus firearms out there. You might want to have some kind of an idea. You never know though, you come across something, you could find a great deal on it. Maybe it doesn't cost very much. Or maybe it costs like $4,000 and it's like, where do I get the money to pay for that? Prices depend there's so many factors you have to weigh in before you can decide on a price. They can be as cheap as $100 for perfectly good functioning, for example, most of the gun rifles you buy at the sporting goods stores. Yeah, they're all typical refurbished rifles, but heck, for 100 bucks, where else can you buy a high-powered rifle that you can use with a cartridge that will drop any big game in North America? Then you have to factor in what kind of model you're looking for, what type of rifle. There are K98 Mausers with death heads and SS runes on them. Those can go for $4,000 easy. And there's so many different types of older rifles that can go for more than that. The old lever action, Winchesters, and guns like that. It's a sky is a limit type of thing on price. So when you identify a particular firearm that you're looking at purchasing or looking for or just come across it how does it appear does it look good does it look serviceable can you shoot it one of the things you're going to want to do you're going to want to inspect this thing as much as you can as close as you can before you pull the trigger on buying anything you're going to want to check out the stock see if there's any hairline cracks sometimes behind on the tangs of some guns you'll find on rifles back here they could be split most of the guns sometimes have splits nice hairline cracks that run around the sides if you in some cases may be able to remove the barreled actions from the stock look down inside there Mausers are notorious for having cracks along where the recoil lug is located also, where the trigger is located, there's hairline cracks, there's just not a lot of support in there. In this example, this K98 Mauser has a laminated stock. Well, is the rifle you're questioning, does it have a laminated stock? Is that a correct stock for the period or era that the rifle was produced? Is it a correct aftermarket stock, a refurbished stock? How about the finish on the stock? Is the finish a correct type of finish for a particular stock that you're looking at? Does it need to be refinished? Some rifles you're not going to want to touch. Others, it doesn't matter if you refinish it or not. It's really not going to hurt the collectability of it or value of it. I mean, as long as you don't go paint it like a chartreuse green or something like that, then you might have a problem. You'll also want to consider on any firearm that you do look at purchasing, are there any stock repairs? Do the stock repairs appear to be arsenal refinished? Or personal refinished job done in somebody's home sometimes it's hard to tell sometimes they're meant to be what does this particular firearm need does it need any parts is it missing any parts is it missing finish is it missing cleaning rods sight hoods slings sights 
anything. Also, something to factor in before you pull the trigger on any purchase. Fortunately, for Mosin and Nagant rifles, K98 Mausers, Enfields, Springfields, Garands, parts are still quite plentiful and not very difficult to get a hold of. Of course, depending on what type of rifle it is, or pistol, and part depends on price. Another thing you're going to want to check out, and to some people, can be very important. For me, it can make or break the deal of a military surplus firearm. You're going to want to check out all of the markings on it. For example, this K98 Mauser is a Russian capture Mauser. It has the Nazi stamps intact. Are the stamps also the correct era? Are the stamps also correct to be where they are? on the firearm and do they dictate the correct era? Does this rifle function? Can you perform function tests on a particular firearm that you're investigating for purchase? Does a bolt open and close? If permissible, will it dry fire? Will the safety function? Will the sight ramp go up and down if it has a sight ramp on it. What types of sights does a particular firearm have? Are these sights correct for the firearm? Are they period accurate for the firearm? In some cases, for example, on some rifles, the K98 Mauser in particular, its predecessor, the Gewehr 98, did have a different style sight originally. Many were upgraded, some were not. What type of sight are you looking for? Are you looking for original? Are you looking for upgraded? The same holds true for Mosin and Nagant rifles. Are you looking for Imperial or Soviet? Arshans or Meters? So if you make a purchase of a firearm that you're checking out and you get it home and you start digging into it, take the stock off, all the metal off, get the barreled action out of the stock, well, it's just soaked in cosmoline. What do you do about that? Well, Mineral Spirits is a gun owner's best friend that buys guns that has a lot of cosmoline in them. It's an excellent tool. It helps to degrease. You can use it on the wood. It's not going to harm the wood finish at all. It won't harm the metal finish at all. cleaning military surplus, first time cleaning of military surplus farms is a totally different topic. After you get a home you're going to want to inspect even more closely than you did before you purchased. Get inside, check all the nooks and crannies. Get bore lights, flashlights, whatever you can get, and any necessary tools to clean out all the dirt, oil, grease, grime, rust, whatever it may be. Probably one of the most important factors on whether or not you may purchase a military surplus firearm is the condition of the bore. If one plans on using it as a shooter, of course the bore is going to need to be decent. Typically, visible lands and grooves will yield good results. However, depending on the caliber, and of course, metallurgy of the barrel, how much has been shot and used over time will weigh in on how the bore is. Other things to consider in regards to the bores on prospective rifles is it dark, shiny, pitted, frosty, many things to consider. Rounded, lands and grooves doesn't necessarily mean a bad shooter and sometimes hardly any visible lands and grooves at the muzzle also doesn't necessarily mean that it could be a bad shooter. If a rifle is bought in question, hopefully not a lot was spent on it. 
and hopefully it will turn out to be a decent shooter once taken to the range if the rifle is purchased to be shot. Also consider counterbores. Typically they aren't found on US service rifles or German service rifles. I've seen or heard of one example on a Grand. I don't think any on any Springfield rifles. Typically the Russian Mosin and the Gunt rifles were counterboard because they needed it. I've also heard of a few Enfields having a counterbore and a Swede Mauser. Typically they need it, that's why they're counterboard. In the case of the M1 Grand or the Springfield rifles, a muzzle gauge can be used to determine how worn the rifling is in the bore. They're fitted typically for the Grand but do seem to come in pretty handy on the Springfield rifles. However, K98s, Mosinagants, and Enfields, they don't have tools like that. Another thing that could be considered are what are known as go or no go gauges, which will help to gauge headspace to determine whether or not the rifle is safe to shoot. It could be important on bolt action rifles or semi automatic rifles like this Garand that do not have a rimmed case typically with most rimmed cases they headspace on the rim and there usually is not a problem however headspacing of the 8mm Mauser or the M1 Garand could potentially be if you're not sure about headspacing it's always a good idea to take it to a competent gunsmith that can perform a headspace check and clear the rifle to fire. Another thing you're going to want to consider is if you are new to collecting what type of ammo does a particular firearm that you're eyeing shoot? Is it easily obtainable? How is your budget? Can you afford the ammo to shoot out of the rifle if you buy it if you're on a budget crunch. Some ammo is considerably more expensive than others partially because they're not very popular calibers 8x56R the Steyr M95 caliber is rather expensive because it's not very popular. Surplus 8mm Mauser is quite plentiful isn't too expensive however with military surplus ammo you'll of course want to pay attention to whether or not the ammo is corrosive it's a good rule of thumb to treat any military surplus ammo as corrosive ammo and clean as such as soon as possible after shooting left in a bore unattended even for a few hours or worst case scenario weeks or months could absolutely wreak havoc on the bore of a barrel. Climate will affect how fast this havoc is wreaked so it's always a good idea to clean your military surplus firearm rifle or pistol as soon as you can either on the range or at home. Do not hesitate do not let it sit you'll forget and you'll be sorry.